let's just see if we are online. Just, oh, I heard a little sound, so I think we're we are live. Let me do that. <coughs> Okay, looks good. Yep, we're live. Okay, so the entire day yesterday, I spent on technical support to get my internet working. It was insane. I started in the morning, and uh, I don't have my phone with me, but I finished, it was like 5.30 in the evening or something like that. And I literally, I was like, different companies with my ISP and my restreaming service, and because there were some issues, but... So far, so good. Looks like uh, things look like it's uploading okay. So um, I'm going to do something. I'm not going to be painting today. I'm going to be um, gessoing. And I figured, you know, maybe I'll just show people um, how to gesso and um, and uh, maybe clean up the edges of paintings and whatnot. So what I've got here is I've got a stack of uh, <clears throat> these things. These are cradle. They're called cradle panels. And let me uh, switch to the top view. Okay, so they're called cradle panels. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And basically, you paint on them. So um, I got these at a local art store called Above Ground. And these ones look like they're decent quality, and I'll show you how I decided that. Part of the reason I decided that, here, let me take it up, put an autofocus, is... If you look at the side, let's see if it can focus in. Come on, baby. Focus up here. Okay, here you go. So what I was looking for is I, I like it when they're glued on and not nailed. So there's a thin layer of veneer. This is a, a small piece of like a plywood. And it's like a veneer in that it's a thin sheet. And along the edges, there's no uh, nails. Um, a lot of times they construct them with nails, which is actually stronger, but it's more work because then what you have to do is you got to get um, this this uh, polyfill and fill in them and then sand it. And so it's a bit more work, but these ones are basically ready to go. So when you hang them on the wall, it already looks nice. So that's that's what this is. So a cradle panel is basically a panel of wood that's already framed like this, already has that. So you can just you can just put wires in it and hang it up and ready to go. Now before you paint, you don't want to paint straight on the wood. You want to prepare it, and you want to um, use this stuff called gesso. So this is gesso. Let me um, go to the front view. Okay, this is gesso, G E S S O, and it's basically this this white paint like stuff that. Um, will bind to different materials like canvas or wood so that it creates a surface where the paint will get absorbed nicely onto it. So if I was to paint directly on the wood, over time, some of the chemicals and stuff could leach into the paint and then it starts pulling off or discoloring or whatever. So basically, use gesso to prepare your painting service, uh, surface. Now, a lot of times when you go buy a canvas at a art store it already is pre-gessoed and you can tell because it's white um if it's not gessoed you can tell because the you can the, the canvas material has a, like a yellow kind of ish color to it <clears throat> now here's the only one problem i have but uh, i may have to trash this whole video because i haven't used this gesso in a while and i realized it, it wasn't sealed super strong and it's kind of dried up i'm not here yeah it's kind of dried up which really sucks but I might be able to salvage it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some water. Actually, let me just zoom in close so you can see what I'm talking about. See how it's crusted away here? Now, the good news is when I put my finger in it, it still uh, has some viscosity. So I could paint that right down, but the problem is it's, gonna, it's not going to be smooth. And I want it to be pretty smooth. So I'm going to do a little test. I'm going to take some water clean water, Boop. put it in there, and let's see, I, I think I'm about, I might just do my style, which is just to get goopy, so I'll just stick my finger in there and squish it around and sploosh it, and it's, it's going to be kind of fun, this feels like, I don't even know what this feels like, it feels like a, 
oh, I know what it feels. It reminds me of when I was a kid, I, I used to do this after school program where you worked with clay. <clears throat> That's what it feels like. It feels like wet clay. So this is still not, I'm basically, I'm making a hole in the middle here where the moisture will stay. And I'm going to try to make that the viscosity of paint, which it not, isn't currently. Let's try this. So now, this is now a video of how to resurrect slightly old gesso. <laughs> so I'm going to stick my finger in there and swirl around, swirly, swirly, swirly. Swirly, swirly, swirly. Okay, it's getting there. I think you even use a bit more water. There we go. Now, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I, I can just tell there's so much gesso here that that amount of water was not a big deal. Okay, so. That's probably good. Now, my, my technique is to be kind of messy. I like, I don't like things being too precise. I like a little bit of chaos. <sighs> okay, so once you have that, what you're going to need to do, let me zoom in, is get a brush, as wide a brush as you can. These ones are probably, oh shit balls, that thing just came off. <sighs> you want to be a little bit cleaner. Okay, so actually I do have things prepared. Like for example, um, I should have mentioned this before, I do have things prepared, such as I have a nice big roll of paper towel. I've got a box of Kleenex, and I have I just have paper towel already ripped up because I know myself, and I need to have like these, this stuff ready. Okay, so let's let's just start brushing this back and forth, and I'm going to cheat by adding some water to it. Well, I'm not cheating, but I'm just going to I can just tell it needs to be a little thinner. Now I'm thinking. Okay, this is going to be my first one, so we'll see how, how it works out. Now, the, usually what the goal of gesso is not to leave any texture on here. So it's already started thick, so there is some texture and like some bumps and stuff. But I don't mind because I typically paint a little thick. Now, here's the other thing. If you want to have a nice clean edge, you should probably put painter's tape on the edge. So maybe on this one I won't, and we'll see how it turns out. And then the next one, I will put painter's tape on the edge to have a nice clean line. Sometimes if you if you brush like what I'm doing right now, I don't know if you notice this, but I'm, I'm brushing right off the edge. So if I'm good at this, it won't get any paint on the sides. But to do it properly. Okay. All right. So this is Josh's technique for gessoing. And the effect that I'm going to get is they're definitely going to see brush strokes and textures. And that's okay. I, I don't mind that. If you want to do more precision brushing, you got to... Oh, shit. This brush fell off of you. You want to make sure you can't see the brushes. And so you do it much more softly. And you go in each direction. Like you'd go up and then down then right then left. And then afterwards, you probably do something like this. You go across the whole thing. But I can already see, look, I already have these funky bumps. Let me see if I can get in the light. There's a little bit of, I'll just outline it. Right around here, whoop, there was some, some extra thickness. <clears throat> like I said, I don't care. I kind of like it. John Henry, good morning, brother. Have you substituted acrylic primer examples in image? Have you substituted an acrylic primer? I'm not sure. Are you talking about um, like a, 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 a clear medium to to thicken acrylic paint? Is that what you mean by? Well, you said primer. No, I don't know what the hell that is. An acrylic primer example, Zin Zerbin 132. I don't know that. I have to look that up. So maybe John can educate this, educate us on uh, on what he's talking about here. I've never, uh, no, I've always, I've always had either gesso around. It's the one of the few things I always recommend if you work 
if you need to um, prepare your canvases, a big thing is yeah. So, okay, I think maybe what he's talking about. Okay, I have to use a different brush. It fell off. Is that there's a primer and then there's uh, gesso, and they're they're two two slightly different things, right? I'm gonna have to use a different brush because look. So I'm gonna have to put it in the water. Okay. Oh, look at these little pieces of crap. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Okay, so this this is uh, again this is just my way of doing jet swing. I think that I would not recommend this haphazard style for most people because I think most people want like a perfect perfect paint. Uh, they want a perfect surface, and already here there's all kinds of textures built up. Um, so what I would do if maybe I'll try to do another one better is is you want to have a nice clean flat. Um, as few brush strokes as visible as possible. Wood paneling, uh, the, the, the gesso sticks really nicely to it. With canvas, sometimes you have to do a few coats. Typically, I would do three coats of gesso. So you paint, you put the gesso on a first layer, you let it dry, um, and uh, it could take a little while. It could take an hour. Um, so in the past, I would I would have like gesso days, where all I would do is just gesso. You sit there, you know, you you cycle through each one at a time. All right, John said, okay, thanks. That was a question for you, not a recommendation. Yeah, no, I just don't know what uh, that acrylic primer you're referring to is. Okay, all right. So this one, the edges look nice and clean. I'm not. There's no uh, gesso on it. And that's just a first coat, so I'm going to put this aside. Oops. What I have done here, let me just let me just show you. Come here, focus, 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 camera. You're supposed to auto. Okay, let me click that off. Okay, um, I'm go to the front camera. Okay, so what I've got, I don't know if I can't really show you, but I've got a bunch of surfaces where I've got like. Um, paper bag um, plastic bags so over there behind me on the stairs on a chair next to me so that when you put it down you don't get gesso anywhere everywhere so you want to have you want to be prepared for that okay let's try another one let's try number two and maybe this one I'll do Just for the hell of it, I almost never do this because I like I'm a messy painter and I like the messiness. But just just for the hell of it, so I got some painters tape, get them at Home Depot, and uh, there's no magic to it, but I'm really happy about this. The quality of these ones. Also, too, like I'm not even I'm not even good about putting tape on. Like even my tape when I do it is, is always a little bit wonky. Alright, so basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match up the edge. Edge, edge, edge. There we go. Okay. So did is the top part matches there hopefully hopefully pretty well and I just have to do that to the other four corners so the idea is that when I paint over it's 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 um, it's not going to get on the on on the sides here so let's just do that now let's just fold that down fold that down I tend to go over. It's better to have too much than too little. I highly recommend always using one piece of tape because otherwise it's hard to match up. And even that tiny little, if you had like two pieces of tape, like one here and one here, you may not get it to line up in the middle. It looks a little, a little goofy. So, and I don't know. I'm just folding it down at an angle just to get it out of the way. 
folding it under so that it can lie flat. Okay. That's how impatient I am sometimes. Like when I want to get painting, I'm like, ah, I don't want to do all this preparation. That's why it's so important for me to have a studio because I need to have everything ready. It Because it, sometimes, even though I have everything ready, it still takes me a good, like, if I, especially if it's a live stream, a live stream, it can take me up to an hour just to get ready. Like, you know, maybe there's some brushes I, I have to pick out and... Uh, with live streaming, half the time, it, like, things aren't working technically, like, my, the connection's bad, and I have to do all these, just technical things, like, you have to adjust the bit rates, you have to adjust the, uh, I've got, like, a, there's a way we can do, an, you could boost the amplification software, there's software that you can use to help your upload speed okay all right I think that's good enough okay so now I think I'm only do it on just this one I'm not gonna bother doing the other ones because it's just I don't care if there's white on the side oh by the way the other option is you could paint the sides white that's the other you could you could do that um, I'm gonna just go with the flow and see what happens okay <clears throat> Let's take some of that. Now that's I'm putting on a lot wetter to show you how to do it so that you don't get the lines. Go go wetter and make sure your brush has is um you gotta make sure your brush the hairs are all uniform and very smooth, like there aren't any bristles sticking out because you want to get a, a nice even stroke. Now that's that's a little bit too light. I gotta add some more gesso to it. Now, if you're like me and you have tons of brushes, um, a very cool fact that I learned uh, is that brushes last a long time. I did not know this. So I've got some of these brushes I've had for like 30 years. Like this probably brush is probably like 30 years old. So if you're going to use old brushes and you're just you got to watch out for little chips. 